Okay, so here we are for another special episode of the Escapade Show. And today we're joined with Nightwave, who is a DJ, music producer, label boss, and currently, as we can see, she's in La Cheetah. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I'm always in La Cheetah. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm very, very well. So uh, we just spoke off there, right? So the name is Maya Medveshchik. No, no. I've, 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 <laughs> that's really that's really good yeah it's a slovenian name and it's yeah, it's a little bit tricky but well done for the efforts <laughs> well so we were meant to meet this year at the soma school back in march already march or you know and already a couple of months ago so that was a gutter so you know how how's things how have you been adapting to basically having to cancel everything that you had planned that i mean that was the worst bit obviously um, for all artists and people in creative industries, you know, canceling things, losing income, it's just awful, um, very challenging, very stressful, but I'm trying to make the best out of it. And um, apart from that, my lifestyle hasn't changed much, you know, like I'm alone on my own a lot doing tunes. And so, you no, know, it hasn't really changed that much. I think for a lot of producers, it's just kind of, oh yeah, we're just even, you know, we're just broke, even more broke, whatever. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, the the cancelling shows was was really heartbreaking. Um, you know, this year was. I mean, no, no, no. I'm gonna sound like a meme now. It was my year, but you know, I kind of felt like um, because I did quite a lot of. Uh, I've done three three records last year. I thought, well, you know, this year it should pick up show wise, and I was really looking forward to doing more stuff and traveling and. Uh, but yeah, I mean, main thing is you know people are healthy and my family are well i'm well that's all that matters so it's it's the thing is i think the biggest thing that any of us can do is is this perspective it's mindset on this and it's like it, it, of yeah. course it could be a lot lot worse and you know we we've got a lot to be grateful for the fact that we can even work in an industry like this yeah, yeah. It is, it is very tough. And you, no, you're totally right. It was, uh, it was for the studio, it was our year. It was like we had some uh, big, big plans, and even myself. <laughs> and, you know, we we're meant to be interviewing yourself at Soma School and getting a DJ demo with our team. And we were really looking forward to even getting you down the studio and, and stuff. So things change, things adapt. So you say your routine hasn't changed that much anyway. So what, what have you been doing? How, how are you coping with it and what are you getting? Um, well, I'm, I mean, to be quite honest, for a little while, um, it really hit me kind of creatively because I wasn't really, I had a bit of a writing block and I couldn't, couldn't really make much music. Uh, I normally go off to pirate studios um, to mix stuff down and, you know, because I can be really loud and obviously that's closed, so I couldn't go there and... Um, so I didn't make any tunes for, for quite a few weeks and then it came back, it came back. So I managed to finish more stuff and I, I've done a few tunes for these like charity compilations and mixes and streams. But apart from that, I'm just really trying to look after my health, my mental health, you know, doing all my other stuff I do, kind of, um, you know, witchy things. <laughs> um, That's so interesting. Yes, I'm trying to do a bit of drawing again that I haven't done in a long time and yeah, just get through, you know, and keep up, keep in touch with my friends. I think I've been a better friend to everyone now that I have in the last 10 years, you know, so it's, it's really made me appreciate my friends and how lucky I am to have everyone in, in Glasgow as well. And yeah, I think it's, after once this is over, I think it will be a nice little reboot of everything. And so uh, that's what I was going to ask. Do you think? Do you think it's going to be though a case of things will change in terms of like your own outlook and like as I certainly know prior to this, I mean it's rushing around every single day. It's like never got time, you know, eating yeah. sandwiches while I'm driving to places. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's like, actually, I want to come back at this a little bit more chilled out, a little bit more slowed down. Yeah, do, you find, um, do you find that'll happen for you? Or do you think everything will just go right back to, and it'll be 10 times busier? 
I mean, what worries me, I won't lie, you know, it's the live show aspect and that's where we make most money and that is not fucking looking good, is it? Uh, no. I don't think. So that does worry me and I worry when we'll be able to go back to gigging and, you know, that's... Um, but apart from that, I, I love being busy. I love working. I love, uh, you know, wh whatever I do, I don't think it will be live shows, but maybe I, um, I, I do a bit of teaching as well. So I've been doing that during the lockdown as well. I did, um, I've started remote able to lessons for people. So I've been doing quite a few of those. Um, so maybe it will be a case that I do that. Um, I've also, I'm exploring more the, just the producing side of things. So, um, <clears throat> And more more publishing sync stuff i'm going to try and get more of that because i really unfortunately i don't think um clubs will go back to how they were for a long time mm -hmm. you know so. well obviously you're you're in a position where like you know a lot of our fans or people that follow are, are people that are aspiring to be like yourself or can at least try and go full time in something that they really enjoy doing so how are you someone that is doing this sort of stuff how are you going to innovate then in terms of just pushing through if you can't do live shows because obviously you've got the label you've got stuff going on as well so what are other things that maybe people that can do that are maybe not even anywhere close to what may be perceived as what you're doing and then it's like oh no if, if she's feeling apprehensive about doing gigs and things so and i know this is the case it's like that this is really really happening so how are yeah. you going to cope with it because you might have just small bits of advice here that just changes the game for someone listening hmm, i mean i think it depends um what your what your thing is if you're a producer then there are there are other things you know like i said just um make just producing for vocalists for rappers maybe uh, I know some people are helping out with engineering and mixing stuff down uh, for other people at the moment uh, I'm really gonna try I have done like sync and publishing well just kind of uh, advert music or you know soundtrack stuff before so I'm gonna see if there's anything like that that I can get in into but uh, you know I'm not I'm not too proud to fucking go and work little if I have to full time because I need to make money. So I don't see myself as you know, producer, DJ, blah, blah, whatever I have to do right now to survive. But obviously, um, you know, I can't wait just even for my own joy to go out and play music again, because it's the best thing. And yeah, these streams have been great, but it's kind of becoming a bit... It's not the same. No, it's definitely not the same. It was just funny. I, I think it was like artwork that tweeted yesterday. It was like, I used to always complain about being filmed and now I'm here on my own filming myself and it is it's like kind of weird you know because it's I just I'm not that comfortable with it it's a little bit kind of I don't know there's no. like kind of too much of an ego aspect of it so yeah I don't know it's interesting though it's finding that balance though as well and self-doubt and ego and all these things all come together as well and you're like what's the point in putting a stream out when everyone's putting a stream out or what maybe if i can do it yeah. different but it's easy to just overthink like people are wanting to hear from you i mean they exactly. are yeah so i think that's important to remember and i've seen that as well and people get self-conscious and you know um especially i think some girls and stuff um but yeah, there are people that follow you that want to hear your music, you know, and maybe it's five or 500 people, but it's the same, I have the same philosophy with playing in clubs. I go and play whether there's one person there or a thousand people, you know, I, I really feel it's your job to go and do that, so. I love um, that attitude, that's exactly yeah. it. Well, that, that is exactly it, and it shouldn't matter if you've got a hundred followers or a million followers, it should feel the exact same, as long as yeah. you have an impact on them. Yeah, well, because the, uh, the focus should always be the music. That's why I always try and remember. And like when uh, we do our workshops or teach, it's like really try to get, because everything now is so personality based and these, you know, big DJs fucking, um, it's really important to not lose sight of the fact that you're doing this for the love of music, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what it's all about, to play good tunes, to share that joy. So. Yeah, so I see, I see I see that you do like I know you're really quite passionate about like advocating for gender equality in the scene and you you, you touched on uh, teaching because obviously at Escapade that's our bread and butter. We do workshops, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we inspire the youth. 
And that's certainly something I wanted to chat to you about as well. I wonder if there's ever any cross work we could do there and, you know, and yeah. certainly get you involved somehow. That would be totally awesome, especially to speak to some of our young people. But talk a wee bit about the work that you do with young people and sort of how you are, sort of, because I know Rebecca does a lot for gender equality in the scene as well. So tell us a wee bit about that, really interesting stuff. Okay, um, yeah, so Producer Girls is um, a, a collective really that I'm a part of that my good friend Emma started in London, she's also a producer and um, we then kind of developed the program and what we're going to teach and uh, basically we offer workshops for, for women or you know non-binary female identifying people of, of all ages so it's not just um, encouraged for young people you know anyone can enter um, and we have quite a detailed questionnaire to see who kind of qualifies because we we don't just do um, lectures you know we really offer hands-on workshops we believe that's very important because a lot of this there's a lot of these workshops around these days and then you end up going there and it's just someone doing a demonstration and it's not really it's not really the same so once we pick we pick normally about 15 people for one workshop and then we offer uh, we actually give them free software which has um, been you know very generous of Ableton to help us out with that and then we we start off and we do a few lessons uh, we get them to basically learn the basics of production and start a tune and ask whatever they want feel that it's a safe space so yeah it's been going really really well we haven't done a few in a while because this is what happens it's just like all of us that teach also travel a lot and you know with dj so it's like finding a free weekend to do it but um we've been doing those at swg3 in glasgow and we've had some really good participants that are now you know making music or performing so it's really nice see that's i think that's really really nice because can you imagine can you imagine young maya who was well i think we could get into how you got involved but can you imagine having something like that growing up and then you've been able to attend a workshop and work with someone like yourself who runs a label, who's involved in the industry, who's played festivals, who releases music at a high level, I mean, boiler rooms a lot. That is a, it must be a great feeling to give back like that. It is, yeah. And um, I, I didn't, yeah, you know, I didn't have anything like that. And for me, it was really difficult because obviously, um, well, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be, how old am I? 37 this year. So yeah, you know, 37. But um, when I started in music a long time ago in Slovenia, there was nothing, you know, we didn't have internet. There's just, there's no way you could look up a tutorial. I was way too scared to ask any of the guys for help. You know, I was very shy about that. Even, even now, sometimes I still feel like, you know, can I ask someone, but asking for help and advice is so important. So, you know, whoever's getting into music or doing something, uh don't be scared to ask for help um so it's it's really nice and just to have a space where like women can be together because you do you, you know often these workshops are very male um so you still feel a little bit kind of uncomfortable or you don't want to ask a certain question because you might feel that you look silly so there's none of that producer girls we can all be silly together and it's all very fun yeah. It's, uh, I, I mean, the thing is, is I know just from, from the work that we do and, and, and working with young people and stuff and, you know, we try and be as hands on as possible and really give an, an all round view of the creative industries, not specifically just, you know, one thing. It's like, you know, the mindset and everything that goes along with it. I think it's, that's such an important message, you know, for, for young people that are very, very frightened to maybe say something or whatever. And really, as you say, there's, that you know you shouldn't be afraid to ask and, and really there's no silly questions when it comes to this when you don't when you don't know something you it doesn't yeah. it's okay like all of us started off not knowing anything about it yeah. um and that's that's kind of how it goes so you're doing some stuff online great what what about the uh, the label what's happening with the label what can you tell us uh, you know so i ran um i started hecatrax um about seven years ago and to be honest i've, I've had over a year break with it because it was just too much and I could not I, I do everything on my own and if I'm really honest I just couldn't do it anymore it was extreme it was a lot of work uh, it's very hard running a label now because it's it, it's a labor of love you don't make any money off it you know I mean it's a, it's very very difficult so as much as I really loved loved it and I'm very proud of what we put out 
um, I, I took a break from it just just because I couldn't cope with everything else. You know, it's like mixes and traveling and releases and fucking everything else that I do. So um, I, I took a little bit of a break, but I am thinking of bringing it back and maybe, you know, doing something different because um, it, it's hugely rewarding, but it's getting much harder and harder to run the label. You know, and then this whole streaming thing came in and... and you just don't, <laughs> there's a lot of expense and not much return. You know, people aren't really buying music. You, you, you need fucking hundreds of thousands of play to just get like a hundred quid of streams. So. Right. I think it's funny. It's like people always think, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side, but it's like when it comes to DJing or music production or being involved in the creative industries, there is a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of knockbacks. There's a lot of traveling. Yeah. There's a lot of traveling on your own and like feeling a little bit secluded and things like that. Yeah, and I think people will just look at DJs and go, "Oh man, they travel the world. It's great." But like a yeah. good friend of ours, Will Atkinson, who's you know you probably you, you maybe know well through the scene and you know world tour and DJ. I think it was last year or the year before he was stuck for about nine days in Mumbai airport over Christmas because yeah. he, he couldn't fly for whatever reasons. And it's like small things like that. It's like you play the gig, you're 5,000 people, the adrenaline is so high, and then yeah. you're back in the hotel room sitting like that. Yes. <laughs> I mean, th this is another yeah. thing. You know, people don't have much sympathy for, obviously, like what we do is it's, it's a massive gift, privilege. I'm so, so grateful, but it is hard sometimes. And you can't exactly phone a mate, you know, that has a normal job and be like, oh, I'm stuck in Vietnam, or something. they'll just be like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. But I think that's unfair. I think that's unfair, though, because, like, no matter what it is you're doing, there's a, there's a stress that comes with it. And, and to hit the sort of levels where people perceive as successful or this or that, it's disgusting amounts of work that needs to go on here. Yeah, there is. It's a, there's a lot of sacrifice. Um, you know, I mean, it is the best job in the world, but it, your mental health suffers, your physical health suffers you don't sleep much your ears are probably all messed up you know uh, unless you're very diligent and wear earplugs um it's very hard to maintain relationships um it's it can be really really hard and yeah like traveling on your own touring on your own you have to this is why you know i really work a lot on my uh, spiritual practices and things that i do because I was very close to the tick tipping point maybe about five years ago when I was touring a lot um, and it was, you know, around the world, time differences, uh, you know, it's a lot of drinking, a lot of just, it's just very toxic. So yeah. it was very touch and go at the point, but luckily, you know, I'm, I, I'm in yeah. a great place now. So The thing is, it's working on the mind, it's everything, like, because you're, you're really not going to achieve the worldwide success of this or that if you don't have your head correct. And it's like, it's such an important thing. And like drinking and the party lifestyle, because the issue is as well, is like everywhere you go, that promoter that's booked you has obviously spent their cash to bring you over, right? So they're yeah. taking a risk first and foremost. Secondly, it's usually an opportunity for them to hang out with the DJ that they really like. Yeah. If not, <laughs> that's why they booked them. Right? Yeah. So then when it's like, right, that's you done your set, you're coming to the party, and it's like, no, I just want to go home now, and it's like, come on, come on. I mean, and yeah. also, you know, m m most of us, I really think, you know, most good DJs are, are ravers, you know. Uh, so sometimes it is hard to say no to a party. We just love doing this so much. And, yeah, I mean, I've been to my share of parties 100 percent but um i think it's all about balance so it is. Um, i have my balance now and of course at the moment there's been no parties for weeks so i think we'll be hitting it hard <laughs> when we go back <laughs> i know probably yeah <laughs> i mean it's as it it's a never evolving landscape especially with everything going on so like prior to this music wise i know you said you can't really talk about too much but what is on the horizon or even if you can't tell us what labels and stuff at least people know that you're, you're you've got stuff coming and things yes yes um so yeah that's another thing so i've kind of i've been releasing now for about 10 or 11 years something like that um and one thing i've learned is just you know 
be patient and sit on things for a bit. Don't go too crazy announcing everything all over the place because you never know what might happen, uh, especially with this stuff going on at the moment. So, uh, but yeah, I do have, um, well, there's at least two records coming out this year, possibly three. So one of them is just being mastered. Um, but yes, I, I'm not sure when, so I'm not gonna, ho hopefully in the summer. I'm not gonna jinx uh, this in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's good to just keep it like that. Uh, and then possibly another one. Um, and I've been putting stuff out on Bandcamp a little bit as well. I've decided that, you know, why not? Maybe this is a time to just kind of put the odd tune out every now and then. And the response is really good. So I think Bandcamp is amazing. I'm going to start using it a lot more. Um, I was a little bit scared of it because I didn't quite understand it so well because uh, normally my releases, you know, they go through a distributor, so it's all that system. Um, but yeah, that's another tip, you know, if you've got Bandcamp, use it, because it's, it's good. Well, it's something we've toyed with with the studio, because we've now been building for the last five years, and uh, the end of last year we just got official accreditation from Pioneer DJ, being the only official DJ school in Scotland, which is awesome. Amazing, yeah. We've been really pushing and pushing and going, you know, it's always been at the back of our mind to start a label or yeah. to have the band camp or something because we've got so many students and people that come through our door that are so talented. So I guess I guess it's just biting the bullet and actually making the start. We've obviously got a team, so we, it'll be more manageable. Like for yourself, yeah. as you said, working on your own is, is very, very difficult. What about collaborations? Do you do many? Have you got any in the pipeline? And, and how do you feel collaborations work? Because sometimes they work really well for some people and other people just, they can't stand it. So where, where do you sit with collabs? Uh, I am a little bit more on the work on your own camp, definitely. But I have collaborated before and I, I, I used to really, I, I used to do a lot more stuff with like rappers and vocalists. So oh, cool. I really enjoyed, really enjoyed that. So um, the couple records I've done, when was it? Fool's Gold. They have rappers on them. Um, and you know, some of them are some of them have gone on and done really well, and some. So it's, I really enjoy that. But because my when I I, I I play, you know, acid house techno electro that sort of stuff. So I've really separated that now. As much as I love producing uh, and making, you know, I make grime, I make fucking garage hip hop, but I keep that separate now, and I don't use Nightwave name for it because it's too confusing. I love that. That's cool. I'd love to hear some of your other stuff. Yeah. I, I love hip hop. I mean, that's my first and true love. You know, it's. Uh, massive fan that's great because yeah. uh, you, you do you do nights as well don't you and you've and you've had like hip-hop nights and stuff haven't you well we do i do nights in la cheetah as you can see i'm in la cheetah well, right you're now. Right now. yeah so um yeah so night rave has been going for seven years now as well which is great um our crowd is amazing and like, we were meant to do like a birthday party in april so hopefully we'll do one once this thing blows over um but yeah, I've put on other things as well, you know, not just techno stuff like footwork, juke, uh, grime. We did a garage night, um, you know, all sorts of like different club music. But yeah, it's nice to not be too. I think maybe Glasgow sometimes can be a little bit purist when it comes to this. I lived in London before for 10 years. So I find nights there a little bit more relaxed. Um, but I think that's changing, I've noticed. but. I remember when I first moved to Glasgow, I thought, okay, guys here really fucking love techno. <laughs> it's, like, it's just just techno. It's <laughs> very snobby in Glasgow when it comes to the to the music selection. Um, but you know, again, it's a good it's a good and a bad thing. But that, obviously, London and the education that it gave you in terms of music and like seeing how different things can thrive all together. That I mean, that is totally awesome. It, well, hence the reason you've you've got so many different styles and flavors under your under your belt which is which is awesome that's what every dj should have i hate when a dj is just like one thing man you know i think it's great it's great if they can do well in that and whatever great but it's nice to see someone with a palette that's a little bit more you know when you come to a night you know you're going to be on a bit of a journey yeah but you really you do have to know you know i i feel like now after dj i started djing you know more than 20 years ago now and I feel like now I've really it's a lot to do with confidence and knowing what you can play and when and you know when it's okay to mix a few styles or sometimes there's you really need to read the crowd well so I feel finally now that I can confidently say that I'm, I can do that and 
and stuff but you know it's not for everyone like I, you can there's nights playing in berlin in a club you're not going to play a certain track you know like a grind oh. track if you can see oh, cool. you know but there are people that do that and they're just like no I, I play that this is what i do and it's like again what we said earlier you know no you're there for the crowd so um if they're really really liking a really hard set you're gonna give them that even if you want to you feel like playing something more shuffly and trippy so yeah you know they're, they're boss they're the boss well, another thing, again, in terms of innovating outside of music, I know you've done some stuff with BBC The Social, and we, we, are, we do some stuff with BBC The Social. We've had, we've had a video out, we've got a couple in the pipeline, exciting stuff. So talk us, about, talk us through that. I believe it was in the studio with Nightwave was the title. I mean, it, was just an, it was just an interview I've, I've done with them, yeah, that I recorded um, in my pal's studio. Um, so yeah, not not much, not much more. I don't think. Although I do, I, I always forget. I've, I do, I always forget what I've done. So you probably know better than me. <laughs> well, of course, I've done a wee bit of uh, recent investigation, uh, okay. um, and it's funny as well that my my girlfriend doesn't. She's not a massive techno fan, but she really seems to like your stuff. And she was like, she was like, I don't know, she really likes your stuff. So oh, you've, nice. you've got a new fan. You've got a new fan. Um, but I think, well, I think, though, well, you should, I mean, the BBC stuff, that's certainly another innovative way of being involved in the creative industries. Um, you know, I certainly know that me and uh, the other Stephen and some of the guys down the studio, we're loving working with the BBC and getting content out there, especially with our business and what we do. But I think it's certainly, like, nowadays, at getting attention and social media and all these things are so part of it now. Yeah, uh, um, it's, I hate, I... I this is something I really struggle with, um, but it's it's inevitable. It's so important, and it's getting you know now it's like no photos aren't enough. Uh, you need to do video content. Then it's like these horrible algorithms. So for example, if I po if I post a photo of a artwork for my record, it's gonna get hardly any likes. If I post that record with the selfie like that because my face is in, it, I'll get more. I'm showing more skin. I'll get more, and it's really messed up. And it's so messed up. You it's fueling this weird narcissism and you know like people just i really we, we really need to come back to just the music um and it's the same with clubs you know i hate the dj booth being like mad light show going in and like fine for some artists that works but most times it's like especially what we play it's you want a dark room you want it to be loud it's it's you know it's like a sanctuary for people to get lost in so i really hope that that doesn't take over because the underground scene has slightly been kind of taken over by that celebrity dj thing you know it's and happening it's here yeah, it's, one yeah. of, it's one of these things the game has changed so much i mean i'm even seeing like uh, recently you know that sort of story with that rapper that just got out of jail there that that young takashi 69 who uh -huh, it, yeah, yeah. it's dreadful stuff i mean like for for hip-hop fans and a hip-hop purist it's like it's like terrible but it just shows like where where we're at it's like that guy came straight out of jail he had the biggest instagram live uh, live show ever he had over two million people watching his, his, his song went straight to like he had like 50 million views in like 30 minutes on youtube and it's like there's no substance really from the outside as him as an artist. It's all yeah. about the look. It's all about this. So it's like, I also think a moment like this is hopefully going to bring things back to the original when it's like, we can't demand the huge fees that these guys have been getting paid and stuff. It's going to have to kind of reset. Yeah. Uh, because it was getting crazy there, as you say, like even that with the people in the booth and all that. It's not about the music, it's about the look, and that's when you have terrible music. Yeah, yeah well, we shall see. <laughs> we, we shall, we shall, but I mean, you're not the first. I mean, most people that we ha have had on all are quite similar about social media. It's like a necessary evil. Um, that we're, yeah. and It's essentially an experiment. It's been about since 2005, 2006. I mean, we're not that deep into it yet, so yeah. it's uh, it's crazy to think. So, what are the next steps? Because we've heard kind of lockdown over the next few weeks is hopefully it's going to be done with, and hopefully everything starts to go. So, what are the plans for Nightwave over the next six months? Um, I mean, just wait. Um, 
So my next things in the diary are the festivals in September that, you know, hopefully will go ahead. So we've got Playground, Riverside. Um, we'll see what happens with that, but I guess I'll just keep on just making tunes and maybe do a bit more teaching. Um, what, whatever, you know, whatever I can. It's a bit kind of uncertain, but um, the main thing is to get uh, the music out, you know, so. Brilliant, brilliant. Try and release as much as I can, I guess. Uh, absolutely, I love it, I love it. Yeah. So I've got a few more questions before we wrap up for um, the day, right? So for maybe just a couple of bits of advice for a newcomer coming into the game who's looking to get into production and DJing, what wee bits of advice could you maybe give to our followers who are looking to push forward? Uh, so don't quit your day job very important <laughs> you know just be realistic about what what it is and and remember that you're following a passion for music not 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 the fucking instagram like sorry about all the swearing by the way i think the slovenian in me is coming out um <laughs> it's okay it's okay it's okay yeah um so just you know remember uh, and follow the passion in your heart and why you're doing this like um always stay green as well like even for me i've i've been using Ableton now, I don't know, for about 15 years or something, and I still learn things. I'm always, you know, just always be open to new ideas, try different things, like um, maybe some specific tips for, I don't know, for production, like a good a good um, thing that I found and what we teach is like, um, ha have a go at maybe like, you know, replicating a track that you like when you're making it, have a go at different genres, different BPMs, um, you know, just, just to get a hold of different rhythms and grooves, uh, listen to a lot of music and maybe uh, if you're like a complete beginner when you're trying to get, you know, grips of what the structure, uh, listen to a song and try and analyze what's in it. So for example, or, you know, kicks, hi-hats, percussion, all this, just so your ears and everything, you get used to it. Uh, and once you get good at that, when you're producing, you're, you know, your DJing will be really good as well because you'll really fine tune and be able to do the levels. That's what I find anyway. Um, but yeah, just just do, do as much of it as you can. Practice, it's, it sounds like a cliche, but it's so true. Just keep doing it. <laughs> really wonderful advice or thank you so much Maya like that that you know people it's just small things like that that though that can just resonate with people so much and by the way the swearing's definitely your Scottish side not the Slovenian side right okay <laughs> <laughs> right um, oh on you go on you go oh no I, I just uh, another thing that um for example you know don't don't com don't compare yourself comparison is the thief of joy as they say and um, don't don't think that in case you know you might, you might be using samples or loops and things like that don't let it discourage you because it's the idea that matters not the fact that you've got a massive studio we all know people with big studios that make really basic music uh, so just really believe in yourself um, uh, whatever the tools are, you know, it's about the final product and the love that goes in it. Oh. Well, I don't think people should worry too much about sampling anyway, because it's one of those things that if you look at all the biggest tunes that have ever been made, exactly. they're all sampled, yeah. they're all sampled. And it's when I really realized that, though, I felt so much more comfortable when it came to sampling and things, because I was like, well, all of the greatest tunes I've ever loved come from something else, usually. Yeah, exactly, um, that's it, yeah. Well, and you know that, well, I mean, we the love and hip hop, you know that. So like you just see, and I mean, 70s soul and funk and all, I mean, that's all yeah. the best stuff that was used. And it's like, bro, right, final question. And this is one I've asked everyone. And this is really unearthed some good stuff. Have you got a recommendation of a DJ set, an artist, a track? A, it could be a film, it could be anything, but just something creative and entertaining that people can go away and YouTube after this. Um, oh my, you've put, <laughs> you put me on a spot there. Um, my favorite thing to listen to is um, uh, a, a very rare interview with uh, James Stinson from Drexia, who I, you know, adore, um, worship. My cat's called Stinson. Um, and, you know, they didn't do much uh, media stuff at all, but they, he did do this interview. Uh, and it's very, very touching, and it's got some amazing tips for for artists. So, so maybe, maybe that I would say awesome. listen to that. 
something a bit different. And again, it's, you know, that's what we like to do here is just have conversations with people, you know, artists are people. Um, so it's like, it's great to just kind of catch up and, and just see what's happening. Once lockdown's over, we'd love to have you down the studio. We could maybe even do a yeah, yeah. podcast um, or even, you know, we'd like to hear some music and you could let us hear some stuff. That would be awesome. Yeah, that's great, yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool. Okay, well, you know, thanks very much to Nightway for joining us here for another uh, Zoom episode of the podcast. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you. You're so welcome. Have a great day. Have a great lockdown. <laughs> well, you, 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 or whatever they say. <laughs> you too, you too.